This is Barbara, and I'm in my Barron County, Kentucky native garden, and I wanted to share with you a few of the plants that are blooming now. It's late September, but we do still have some pollinators who are looking for pollen and uh, host plants. So we're going to start right here next to the sidewalk. We've got some beautiful great blue lobelia, and if you look closely, you can see a bee buzzing around it now. The bees are like this, but the, the um, hummingbirds really love it because it has those long tubular flowers that the hummingbirds can put their beak in. This can get to be three feet tall and it likes moist areas and it likes shade or parked sun. So if you've got a shady garden, great blue lobelia would be good for that. You'll see all the yellow here is mostly goldenrod. And there are over 30 species of goldenrod in Kentucky. So I'm not even going to try to guess at which ones I have in my yard. These all grow wild and they're great for pollinators. You can see a wasp on that one right now. I've also learned they get these little things called galls on them. I don't know if you can see it there. Right there. It's a little black spot. And that's something that the plant produces when insects lay their eggs in the plant. Here's some more. They're not supposed to hurt the plant, but I have noticed that wherever we have those, there are no blooms in that particular spot. But some of these plants have, like this one here, has several blooms on it, but it still has a little gall on there. The sunflowers, or the um, goldenrod, excuse me, are um, have sticky, heavy pollen. Many people confuse these with ragweed in the fall, and they will blame goldenrod for their allergies, when actually, because the pollen is so heavy and sticky, it doesn't go through the air the way that ragweed pollen does. It takes a pollinator to actually land on it and move it from flower to flower. And you can see there's some little native bees, I believe, on that one right now. So it's a great late blooming flower for pollinators. We're going to move down here next to my narrow-leaved sunflower. And this is one of the unusual sunflowers that actually likes shade, or part shade. It's growing here under a cypress tree. You can see where it gets its name because it has these long, narrow leaves. And we have more of it over here. It does get quite tall. This is probably three to four feet, four feet tall here. And it has a beautiful bloom on it. You can see a little more of my great lobelia. And then we're gonna move on down past my golden rods again. And we're going to take a look at something called Slender Gerardia. These are tiny, light, airy-looking little plants. Very thin, small leaves on them. And pretty little purple blooms on the flowers. This is a host for the Buckeye Butterfly. It almost doesn't look big enough to be a host plant, but it is. And you'll see bees and other pollinators on this plant. It only gets to be one to two feet tall. And it's here in a garden that's partially shaded. And next to it, I have some golden asters. These are late blooming asters. And these are compact asters. They're not those tall, long asters that you usually think of. Again, a good pollinator plant, not only for the butterflies, but for the native bees 
and other insects. And it will reseed itself. And we're going to move on to, this is a small headed sunflower. This one is starting to fade, but this is a long uh, blooming plant. It's been blooming for almost two months. I have them all over my yard. This is one that I cut back because they're so tall. They get to be, um, I'll show you some taller ones over here. They get to be four, almost five feet tall. You can see these over here. They're starting to fade a little bit, but I still have quite a few that are blooming. These I did not cut back. So I think next year I may cut some of these back so that I don't have such tall flowers in my garden because they tend to flop over my sidewalk. So those are a few of my plants that I wanted to share with you. I see one more here, a little mist flower that's starting to fade, but they're pretty little blue flowers. They're also called ageratum if you buy them in the nursery. But they're also loved by pollinators. And down here we have some frost weed aster. I believe it can also be called field aster. Some people consider this a pretty weedy plant, but it is, again, good for uh, pollinators in the late fall. This will fill up. It's just now starting to bloom, and it will fill up with these white flowers. So you'll see native bees and other insects on these flowers. So those are just a few of the plants that are blooming now, still in late September, in my Kentucky native garden.